Hello and welcome back to my Python videos. In this video we're going to install DHCP and DNS on a Raspberry Pi. Once we get that up and running we're going to look at two key scripts. One is for the DHCP which will monitor it to see when new devices are added and the other is for DNS that will run reports and show you what devices are going to where. We're going to install that on, on this little device, a Raspberry Pi. This retails for about $30. It's a little mini server. You can also do this video on any Linux distro. So if you don't want to buy this, I'm not selling Raspberry Pis, um, but it's just this device is ideal for this task as the servers need to be running all the time. It's a fun project with Python um, and other things. So uh, let's get started. Okay, so before we can get started, let's take a look at what we're actually doing here. We have a Wi-Fi router with an address typically of .1, um, and that is what currently provides your DNS and DHCP settings to your devices on your homeland, home network. We are going to add the Raspberry Pi to that device with an Ethernet cable um, and give the Raspberry Pi an address of .10. This means that when devices connect to your network after this is configured, they will pull the um, information from the Raspberry Pi as opposed to pulling it from your router. There are two key things to consider here. First of all, you don't need to use a physical cable to connect the Raspberry Pi to the router. You can do that with Wi-Fi. It's a little different of a configuration, but we can show you that later. And the second thing is that the IP addresses used here are typical for home networks. Yours may be different if it's 10.0 or 172.20. Then you will need to change that to make this work. And we'll show you how to do that uh, later in the uh, video. You will also need to change the configuration on your Wi-Fi router to disable DNS and DHCP. And finally, when all this is configured, we will use two Python programs, DHCPY monitor um, dot pi, which will monitor the DHCP for new leases, and parsk queries dot pi, which will run a report on the DNS and track where um, the DNS requests are going. So now we need to get started and go to GitHub and type DDMON. That's the repo where the configuration files are. You can search for my name as well, but I come up first here. And when you see the repo, you'll see all the configuration files and the Python files that are used to make the DNS and DHCP server work. You will download this by cloning it and copy the link. Uh, click the little button here and clap, copy the link into your clipboard. And then we'll go back and we'll log into our device. So you must be logged in as root into the Raspberry Pi or whatever device you're using. And you must be in the home directory of the root. So PWD will verify that. And then type git clone space and then paste in the link that you just copied from GitHub. This will download the files and put a directory on your device called DDMON. So you can change directory to that directory and in there you'll find a, an install script that you run it and it will uh, download all the necessary software and copy the configuration files to the appropriate directories. Everything basically to get your system up and running. This script may take a while because it updates your system in addition to downloading files. Also, you may see um, error messages with DHCP when it loads initially. Nothing to be concerned about. Um, the system will reboot after all of this, so you will be kicked out and you will need to log back in. If you use the cable version of our example, the Ethernet cable, then you can simply SSH to 192.168.1.10 to log back in and we'll get straight into the root directory and we need to check three services that are working in order for our configuration to be operative. First one is the DNS. We need to verify that it's loaded, installed, and in here it is, and it's running. The second service will be the DHCP service, which is isc-dhcp-server. Um, if that's up and running, um, you're good to go. And the last one is Python, the Python code that we wrote, and it's installed as a service in the background, and that was called uh, Lease Renew or Renew Lease, um, and that's running too. So once those three services are up and running and enabled, 
we're almost uh, at the finish line with the configuration. We have one more thing to do, and that is configure the email settings so we can get the notifications. I have chosen uh, Gmail. The file to edit is uh, in the DDMON directory, and it's called uh, email underscore config.py. This is where you put your settings in for your Gmail account or whatever provider you choose. You will need to change most likely the settings of your email provider to allow Python or allow Raspberry Pi to connect and send email. So I'll talk about that in a second. So basically Gmail and other providers want you to reduce the security settings on your email to allow external apps to retrieve email. So in Google, you would log in with the account. I suggest that you set up a, a specific account for this purpose rather than using your regular email. And you would log in and reduce the security right here. Finally, wherever you're sending the emails, you should check the spam folder to ensure that the emails are not going there first. Once our configuration has been verified and the email has tested, the only thing that's left to do is to run a test on our configuration. So I'm going to do that by launching a virtual machine, a Linux virtual machine that will boot up and will request an IP address from my DHCP server, which is the Raspberry Pi. And I should get an email shortly thereafter saying that this address has been requested and these are the devices currently on my network. So there is the email, um, and if I open that, it shows me that the Kali Linux was just added to my uh, devices. It also gives me a list of the current devices around there. I let this run overnight, that's why there are so many. Um, so this is real time as well. The Python script is set to pull the lease file, and once there is any change to that, then it compares the old leases with the current leases, and that's how we got the new file from the Kali Linux. In order to test the final Python code that we have, we can go into the DDMON directory and type Python 3 um, parse queries. Parse queries is the file, and Python 3 is obviously the uh, program we're going to run with it. It gives a list of all the uh, devices on your domain. It starts at the top with the top 10 most requested domains on your network. Um, you'll notice that on my list here, I have names instead of IP addresses. And the reason for that is that I've set up a uh, zone file, which I've also included in the config files from GitHub. So you will just need to add a name for your devices in that zone file. I have two zone files that you should be aware of. So the zone files are both in the var cache bind directory. So to edit them, you would use your editor via Vim or Vi or, and go to db.mydomain.com. That's the regular zone file. And just follow the format exactly as it is here for the devices you want to add. To get the reverse do, uh, domain lookup, you would go to the same directory and type the following to get the um, reverse lookup. So again, follow this format exactly and you will um, have your reverse uh, domain lookup. So finally, if you go into the uh, Python program, the parse queries, I have a whitelist set up. And the purpose of this is to filter out domains that are used a lot and really not much value. Uh, for example, uh, the Apple uh, domains, there can be thousands of them and it, it doesn't serve any purpose on your report. So it's easier just to add them to the whitelist. I just received another email for someone that accessed the network, so that's clearly still working. So um, that's the domain report. The Python code in both of these files is relatively simple and includes all the techniques and tools that we learned in the Python fundamentals training. I encourage you to go in and edit these and understand them and, and, uh, and make them work for you. For example, the domain report uh, can be modified with the whitelist. Uh, you can block and filter and, and re uh, format the report in any way you uh, please. So that's the objective. And in the next last section of this video, I'm going to go over the options we have in case that you're not using the cable or you're not able to use the IP addresses that we chose for uh, for this demo. 
If you cannot use the Ethernet cable to connect to the Raspberry Pi to the router, you will need to do two configuration changes. The first one is in the uh, DHCP CD direct uh, conf file, which is the static IP address. So you would change that to the LAN address. So you essentially give the Wi-Fi a static IP address, which is necessary. You would could do this in the ddmon directory before you run the script, or you can run it in the actual file in the Etsy directory afterwards. The second thing you need to do is go into the DHCP under the default, Etsy default, and you would make sure that the interface is pointed to the, uh, the Wi-Fi. This is necessary for DHCP to load. If you need to use different IP addresses than we've used, you have also two things to do. The first thing is to do a find and replace in the ddmon directory, and this will have to be done before you run the installation script. Um, so we can use sed command and insert um, your IP address. So it's, if it's 10.0.0, .0 .0, um, you would insert that into uh, the 192.168.1. So you run this once, it'll change it in all the key areas. And if you look at the, uh, for example, the DHCP uh, config file, you'll see that all the, um, the leases and scope and IP addresses have been changed to 10.0. I'm assuming in this that you can use the uh, device IP, for example, 10, um, or the one for the router, but if you need to change those, you would have to run this again. Um, the second thing you need to do for the new IP address is change the zone file. The zone file currently is db.2, um, it's the reverse of the IP address. It's uh, 1.168.192, you would change that to 0 .0 0.0.10 so that you can load the zone file. This is not necessary for it to work, but um, it will make your life easier down the road when you adding um, devices um, to your to your zone files. So there are the two configurations that are necessary to change the IP address and the ones prior to change the um, Wi-Fi from the cable. So that's it for these configurations. Um, these have been tested on a Raspberry Pi. I did not test them on other Linux distros, but if you have challenges, I'm more than happy to help. Please create an issue on my GitHub repo and I'll address it as soon as I can. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to subscribe. And until the next time, um, take care.